Hey guys, and welcome to part 9 of Easy Food series. I haven't uploaded any video in the past 10 days. I've been a little bit busy, but I'm back and I'll try my best to finish this series as soon as possible. So anyways, in this video, we will set up our room database to save meals into a local database. So when the user go to favorites, he can find all the meals that he saved in the database. In this video, we're just gonna set up room and in the next video, we will save the meals. And if you have never implemented room in any of your projects, then it's totally okay because I'm gonna explain everything you wanna know about room in this video. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do as usual is adding the dependencies. So go to your build gradle and then open up your browser and now search about room dependency. And now scroll down and select and select Kotlin. Then you want to copy the first three lines and paste them in your gradle build. Also, we want this line, so copy it and paste it. And we want this dependency for uh, for using coroutines. So copy it and paste it in here. And don't forget to apply capped plugin so here you can apply it apply plugin and this plugin is kotlin capped just change this value to def before you click on sync now now try again and let's see and as you can see we added all the dependencies we need to work with room all right, now when you work with room, you need to consider four things in your mind. The first thing is the model class, which is represent the entities. And entity is the same as a table in the SQL schema. So entity represent a table and it is a model class. Then you want to create an interface called DAO, which stands for data access objects. And this interface will contain all the methods or all the functions that need it, such as insert a new meal or update a meal, uh, select all the meals uh, from your database, and a lot of other functions that you can include in that interface. And the third thing you want to consider when you work with Room is to build your Room database. And there are other information that I will explain to you when we get to that point. And the fourth thing, which is a type converter for your attributes in your model. So let's say in our meal model, we have all of these data. And as you know, in databases, we only can save primitive data types, such as number or strings. But in our meal model, we have a data type, which is any. So you can save objects inside your database. So for that, we need a converter that converts this object to a primitive data type such as strings or numbers or whatever from the primitive data types that we have. So these four things you want to consider when you want to build a room database in your project. So now let's start with the first thing, which is the entity. And as we said, the entity represent a table. So the table in our project is going to be the meal model. So you, you open up your meal class and annotate it with entity. Now. With this annotation, you tell room that this is an entity. And now, because this is an entity or a table, then each table in database has a name. So in here, you're going to pass the table name. And the table name is, uh, you can put wherever you want. In my case, I will name it meal information. Like this, you identified that this class is an entity. And you know, in a table, you need a primary key. If you don't know what a primary key is, it's simply one attribute that all the other attributes depends on. So the ID meal, as you can see, uh, all the other attributes depends on that ID meal. So in here, I'm going to annotate this with a primary key. And the primary key, from its name, it should be a unique value. So every meal should have its own ID meal. And you can make this uh, primary key auto-generated by adding auto generate it and enable it to true in this case you will pass zero as a default value and change this to integer like this and now room will generate a unique key for this id meal attribute but we have our id meal from uh, our response from retrofit so we're gonna return like default now there is still one thing we want to do in this class which is a nullable value because all of these attributes might be null. 
So for that, we want to add this question mark, which means this attribute could be null. So add it to all the attributes we have in this class. So I'm going to add it and back again. All right, by adding the question mark, we are done with this class. So now we're going to go to step number two of setting up room database, which is creating the DAO interface. So for that, I'm going to create a new package. And I'm going to name this package DB, which stands for database. And I'm going to create a new interface inside that package and call it meal DAO. Meal DAO like that. And the first thing you want to do in this interface is to annotate it with DAO annotation that tells room and that tells room that this is uh, the DAO interface. And now you want to write all the functions you want to use, such as uh, insert, insert a new meal, delete a meal, or maybe select all the meals you have and other functions you can write in here. So the first function I'm going to create is insert to insert a new meal. So you can have your function like that function insert meal and we want to get a meal as an argument and don't forget to make that function as a spent function because this might take some time and we don't want to block the main thread and instead we can do it in the IO thread using coroutines. So now the other function we want to have is update to update a meal It's going to be a suspend function update meal and this will take a meal like that and i want to show you another way that you can delete this update function and add this bracket in here and add this attribute on conflict then on conflict strategy this means if you try to insert a meal that already existed in your database then it will update it instead of insert a new meal so you can change the name of this function to absert means that this function does the insert and absert so it's two function in one function or you can just create another function and annotate it with update anyways now we want to have one more function to delete a to delete meal so this is going to be suspend function delete and it's going to take a meal and this is going to be meal now the last function i want to have which is a query and you know in room you can write any sql query so i'm gonna write a sql query now which is select all from the table name which is this one meal information and you can order it order by whatever you want or not like that of course order order by and you can uh, specify according to which attribute you want to order this list but i'm just gonna leave it a simple select query now i want to have a function but this time is not a suspend function uh, because this will return a live data so function get all meals and this will not take any arguments and this will return a live data of list of meals so now you finished step number two of setting up your room database. Now we move to step number three, which is building our room database. So we're going to build our room database by creating a new class and call it meal database. Create that class. And the first thing you want to do in this class is to make it an abstract class because we want to have an instance from our interface. And we don't want to write all these methods. Instead, Rome will write it to us. So now uh, you want to annotate this with database. And inside here, you want to pass the entities because it's entities. That means more than entity. You want to pass it inside an array. So array of, mm -hmm. and you will pass uh, you will pass this entity, which is meal. But in Kotlin, you can convert it like that. Now you want to give a version uh, which is one and this version used when you update something in your database. So let's say now you put this version one and after you build your database, oops, you discovered that you need to change something, uh, something sorry, in your entity and you change it, then you need to change this version. 
to tell Roam that I've changed something, please rebuild my database. So whenever you change something in your database, just don't forget to increase this version. And now there is one more property, which is export schema and put it to false. Uh, this means if you want to export your database or your schema as a JSON, you can actually delete it because it's false by default. Okay, so now the first thing you want to do inside this class is to have an instance from uh, this interface, our DAO interface. And to do that, you want to have an instance by a function, by an abstract function. So abstract uh, function DAO meal DAO and this is gonna be meal DAO because we used abstract in this function and abstract in our class we don't need to implement the these methods instead of that room will write all of the required methods for us and now we want to have a function to return an instance from this uh, database class so I'm gonna write it inside a companion object so we can call this function by the name of that class and now you want to have an instance from this database and initially I want to set it to null so it's gonna be var instance and this instance from meal database initially this is a null and you want to annotate this with a volatile and this annotation means that any change on this instance from any thread will be visible to any other thread. And now we want to write a function to get instance from our database. And we're going to need the context in this function. And this function will return a meal database. Open curly brackets. And in here I want to check if the instance equals to null then I want to build this database and to build database first instance equals to room dot database builder and in here you will pass the context and you will pass the meal database class class java and then you want to pass the name of your database so this is gonna be meal dot tb and you can or you can put any name you want and then don't forget to add this function dot fallback to destructive migration and this basically specify what you want me to do when you change the version and this function means that i want to rebuild the database but i want to keep the data inside that database and afterward just call dot build and lastly we return the instance like that and and cast it to meal database we're not done yet there is two more things you want to do the first thing is annotate this with synchronized means that only one thread can have an instance from this uh, room database and of course we want to inherit from room database and actually we should have done this at the beginning of this class but anyways but anyways now your database is but if you run your app, you will get an error. And let's see what this error tells us. As you can see, it says, cannot figure out how to save the field into database. You can consider adding a type converter for it. And that's what we talked about, which is the fourth thing, which is a type converter. As you can see, we have uh, this object and, and you want to convert it to a primitive data type. So for that, go to your package and create a new class and call it meal type converter create that class converter my bad uh, conver did i did i say converter actually it's a convert it's a converter not a converter so anyways now you want to annotate this with type converters to tell room that this is my type converter class and now you want to have two functions to convert between a data type to a data type. The first function, which is from any to string. And this will take an attribute, anything, you can name anything in here. So attribute, and it's any, and make it a nullable, because we said that we might get a null value from our response. And now, of course, this will return a string. 
then you want to check if this attribute equals to null then you will return an empty string and if it's not then return the attribute but as a string or you can call to string it's your call you can do whatever you want and another function is needed which is from any uh, from string to any to any and this will take attribute from ty type of string this could be a null this will return any we can copy this paste it in here but this will return just an attribute and now you have your type converter ready but don't forget to annotate this with, with type converter so room database will use this function when it wants to insert inside the table and it will use this function with a retrieve data from your database so now you want to give this type converter class to your builder class you write your type converters and you're gonna pass your type converter we just create it which is mail type converter and of course it's a class now if you run your app you shouldn't see any error which means that you've built your database successfully but we have an error here that tells us that um, okay just gonna remove it I actually used it to explain to you guys uh, this actually happened because I enabled auto generated and when you enable this auto generated then your primary key should only be integer so I'm gonna remove this because we we get our ID meal from the API so we don't need to generate that and just remove this question mark from the primary key because a primary key can't be a null so remove this now if we click run then we shouldn't see then we shouldn't see any error related with room so let's see install and yes okay now everything works that means we set up our room database successfully so that was everything for this video i hope that i explained room very well to you and i hope that you understand everything about room database and in the next video we will set the functionality of this click so when we click on this button we will save uh, the clicked meal inside our room database so that was all for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next video